ChatGPT has been marketed as a question answering and search engine tool. It can write better than a writer, code better than a coder, translate text, rewrite it in any style. Generally, a better person than you could ever hope to be. Actually, ChatGPT is different than that. It is a computer which you program with English. The goal of ChatGPT is to accept a string of text as input and predict what comes next over and over, purely based on computational statistics. In other words, when you enter text into it, you're asking what would a response to this look like? What it looks like, not what a correct answer should be. Let's open up ChatGPT. Remember that ChatGPT is a research preview. The system may occasionally generate incorrect or misleading information. In other words, it's a liar that lies. Next, we collect everything you say and do. Done. So that we are on the same page, the text that we type in is called a prompt. The text that ChatGPT returns is called the response. Many people talk about the art of constructing prompts. Some even go as far as to call it prompt engineering. Let's see what ChatGPT has to say about it. Tell me about prompt engineering. What are five essential elements? The response is, number five doesn't seem to make a whole lot of sense in this context. That leads us to insight number one. You can ask ChatGPT to help. It's the ultimate help system. It can explain and give examples. For example, let's say we want to learn more about context in a prompt. I can refer to this as the context or the second item in the list. Let's expand number two. Add an example. You can think about this as asking someone to tell you a story. The more of the who, what, when, where, and why you provide, the more satisfying the story might be. Here's our example prompt. The context is the backstory of the prompt. I have found that a good context will define the audience of the response and what role GPT is playing in producing the response. You'll typically see this in example prompts like, act like a doctor, explain the flu to a seven-year-old. That's a lot of context in just a few words. Let's run this prompt and we get back something that looks like a review. Let's bring up our list of essential prompt elements again. The last T in chat GPT stands for transformer. Take a representation of text and transform it to another. The transformer was originally for translating languages, like English to French. But once people started using them, they found transformers could convert to other representations too. Let's convert this list to a table. We'll say, turn this into a table, add a column labeled importance, and the importance of these rows is essential. Let's add the summary back in. Add the summary to. The thing to remember here is that the response is now part of the context. That means I can modify this table. Let's add three more rows with important but not essential elements. We are using ChatGPT 3.5 here. ChatGPT 4 handles this more elegantly. Let's append our new entries to the old table. Let me know in the comments below whether you think it is worth upgrading to chat GPT-4. And we'll add in two more rows. Importance, optional. And we'll append it to the full table again. Chat GPT is non-deterministic. This means that the output is not uniquely determined by the input. This goes against the grain of what computers have been for the last 70 years. Here's an example. Give me a reference to the connection between malaria and air conditioning. It gives us what appears to be a reference to a study. Let's regenerate the response. It gives us another study. Let's take a look at the study. And it can't find it. Now, in the back of your mind, you remember that ChatGPT is trying to generate what looks like an answer. Is this a real reference, or is it something that looks like a reference? The crux of the matter is that you need to recognize a plausible answer. You must know the answer when you see it, or check the work. The next insight is that you can use ChatGPT to summarize and explain. Let's say I wanted to start an online business. What skills do I have? I have a website. Let's ask what skills are needed to run the site jetsonhacks.com. Are a very particular set of skills. I can type continue here. It will give me even more skills that I possess. Let's combine the first eight elements into a new list. Let's add video creation to this list. Based on these skills, 
I ideate five different online businesses. It's okay. I'm from California. I can speak its language. Ideate's a funny word. Online media platform. That looks interesting. Expand on number five. We can also do things like reverse prompting. Turn this into a concise ChatGPT prompt. If you already have an answer, but you don't know how to ask for a more general case, just ask. You can also do things like transform a list into a sentence. Convert this list into a concise sentence. Another insight. Be precise and concise. I want to start an online business. Give me an outline to get started. We are using role, business advisor, and audience, entrepreneur, as key value pairs. This helps us use fewer tokens. The current GPT models only allow a certain amount of tokens for their context, prompt, and response. The number of tokens depends on the models in use. You may ask, what's a token? Like any good computer, ChatGPT takes the text that you enter and turns it into numbers. The prompt that you enter is turned into tokens, which are in turn represented by numbers. On average, there are three or four characters per token. Here's an example. This set of tokens is represented by this vector of numbers. Let's build up a little prompt based on our previous work. ChatGPT can help you build better prompts by asking questions. Just add ask questions on the end of your prompt. The questions are related to the context that you are working in. By answering the questions, you help it generate better responses. Give a business plan outline based on what we've discussed. Let's turn it into a table. Let's add a column that describes the difficulty of creating each section. Let's add a column that has a time estimate for each one. We'll clarify that it's for a small business. We know we can't generate large documents in ChatGPT right now. For example, we cannot generate a 50-page business plan. But what we can do is build an outline and then work on each section. The outline gives the beginning context, then we can be more specific about each section as we go along. Let's go over an example. Let's take our table and turn it into what is called a YAML file. This is a common file format for structured data. If you look real close, you can probably see something that looks similar to a slide deck. I took our YAML file and turned it into a real file. It's over on the right side. If we want to work on a particular section, we start a new chat and then load the YAML file as a prompt. Do you understand means that you are asking if ChatGPT understands the context, task, and instruction. Then we grab the contents of the YAML file and provide that as a prompt. Then you are ready to go work on any part of the document. Let's say we want to work on the financial plan. We'll prompt something clever. Let's work on the financial plan. It's an absolutely horrible idea to have ChatGPT write you a business plan. However, it can be extremely useful to have it ask you questions and give you ideas. Plus, it can summarize a lot of the information that you might need. Let's see, write a sample financial plan. Now let's work on revenue streams. Let's focus on premium content. We plan to offer a subscription newsletter. Show me a sample subscription plan and revenue stream. So it throws some numbers out here. It's not real good at math. You need to keep a close eye on it. Let's rewrite it as a table. Okay, I want its role to be a financial planner, audience is an entrepreneur, and the task is to discuss the revenue stream with the highest return on investment. Based on what we have already discussed, a subscription newsletter apparently has the highest ROI. What is the typical acquisition cost of a newsletter subscriber? Then it makes up some numbers. And that should be the starting point for doing your research. By now, you get the idea. 
ChatGPT is good in helping you think about thinking. It can help you with structuring your ideas and projects. It can do many tedious, time-consuming tasks. How long would it take you to draw up a business outline? Is it perfect? Not close. Don't rely on it. But that doesn't mean it's not helpful. I hope you can share some of your experiences with ChatGPT in the comments section below. Hey, if you like the video, give it a thumbs up. And if you have not already, please subscribe. Thanks for watching.